Hi, uh, I'm Roger Lin, and this is a video about how I made Linstrument. Uh, I enjoy talking about how I made Linstrument, and actually I, I co-teach a class at Stanford's Karma, um, or a workshop at Stanford's Karma every year in the late spring about instrument building, where people can bring their ideas in and uh, we teach them about uh, using uh, Arduino and Teensy and all these little hobby uh, computer boards, uh, which are very low cost and some of the free tools that are available uh, to try and uh, make their own instruments. And they come up with some wonderful ideas. Uh, so my goal in this video would be to, by passing on uh, my experience of how I made an instrument and how it really used, uh, it was developed originally on uh, using uh, low cost hobby tools uh, that you would do the same and you would find that inspirational and might uh, go on and make your own instrument. So to start with, um, around 2009 I started thinking about the idea, idea of making an instrument that captured three dimensions of continuous touch, an instrument, uh, to provide the same sort of subtle variation of each note's loudness, pitch, and timbre that acoustic wind and bowed inst uh, stringed instruments provide. Um, I also like the idea of arranging the pitches in a grid, multiple rows of evenly spaced semitones with any pitch interval between the rows, similar to a stringed instrument. The evenly spaced semitones provide the ability to slide and pitch directly from one pitch region to another, and the multiple instances of each pitch provide multiple fingerings for a given chord or solo line, which makes it very flexible, uh, just as you can finger on a guitar uh, a chord in a variety of ways. Plus, it was isomorphic, so the fingering for a given chord or scale would be identical for all 12 keys. My goal was to create an instrument with a playing surface consisting of this grid, as the instrument has, of finger-sized pads, each capable of capturing three dimensions of finger movement plus velocity and release velocity, and to do this polyphonically. I wondered how would I do this. One day, I discovered a new company appearing. It was called Touchco and they offered a general purpose pressure sensitive multi-touch tablet that was about this big. Um, I bought one and attached an overlay to it that divided its surface into a grid of pitches. Then my friend Tim Thompson wrote a computer software driver for me that converted the tablet's data into open sound control messages and I wrote a simple synth in Max MSP that used that OSE uh, 3D data to control the loudness, pitch, and timbre of a single, uh, a simple synth tone and polyphonically. Now, uh, Touchco's tablet was too small and scanned too slowly for what I wanted for rhythmic music play, but it worked well for certain types of music. I started talking with Touchco about using their sensing technology in an instrument. Then suddenly their website went down and they stopped responding to my emails. I later learned that they had been bought by Amazon, which needed a, uh, a touch tablet technology to stick under their Kindle display so they could, people could point to places on the screen, which at that time they didn't have. Uh, so Amazon bought them and shut down Touchco's other operations. Oops. <laughs> Interesting factoid, the founder of Touchco, after finishing his work with Amazon, started the Sensel company, which make, made the now continued morphed touch tablet, which I thought was a wonderful product. And I was sorry to see it go away. Uh, there were many creative uses for it, and it really had a, a strong maker community around it. Anyway, after Touchco was shut down, I tried to find another touch technology but none existed for my needs. It's not like you can call up an electronics store and say I would like to have a touch center specifically for a grid uh, controller uh, expressive musical instrument. Uh, so anyway, I started to develop my own. I came up with an idea. Uh, at the time, you could buy these little two-dimensional linear touch strips, like linear potentiometers uh, that sense your touch and could sense either your position on the strip or your pressure on the strip. Uh, these consisted of two layers that only made contact when you pressed on them from the top. It occurred to me that if I could separate these strips into their two layers, I could arrange the bottom layers horizontally with the sensing material facing up and then place the top layers on top vertically with the sensing material facing down, such that the row and column uh, layers would electrically connect when pressed 
from above at the intersections. By changing the signals that connect to the ends of each of the layers under software control, I could sense horizontal movement, vertical movement, or pressure on a single row column intersection at a time. And then by scanning through all of the intersections at very high speed, all the intersections would appear to be sensed simultaneously to the musician. Uh, each of these intersections represented a notepad on the final instrument. To test my idea, I bought a few of these touch strips and disassembled them, uh, took the layers apart, and then arranged the layers in rows and columns and connected their terminals to an Arduino hobby circuit board and then wrote simple Arduino software to send to scan these things uh, one intersection at a time and send each touch's MIDI messages to my Max MSB synth. And when I played it, it worked pretty well. <laughs> To avoid boring you, I'm omitting plenty of details about how it works. But if you do want to know the details of how it works, visit my site's uh, rogerlindesign.com, my site's Linstrument support page, and click the link for How the Sensor Works. I then asked the maker of these touch strips to fabricate a large custom sensor, and this is what it looks like now. Uh, which has the same two layers and the same uh, printing of um, resistive inks on it, which is what uh, they use. Uh, and they use a sensing, uh, a technology called force sensing resistors, that, how you can sense the pressure on it. So I asked them to use that same technology to make a larger sensor, a sensor to my engineering drawings, uh, essentially duplicating what I had done on a larger scale. Um, but the, the important point here is I was able to create a proof of concept using cheap off-the-shelf parts. Those little two-dimensional sensors are maybe $10 each, something like that, and I bought six of them. There was a problem. Uh, I wanted to have LED lights on the top of this, but the resistive sensing material they print on the sensor is opaque, so light can't get through it. So I asked them, in my engineering drawings, I had them print the sensing material, but leave little unprinted three-millimeter diameter windows uh, exactly in the center of where each touchpad would be. So the light could shine up through an uh, LED board and then through the hole there and then be visible to the musician. Anyway, I tried that out and it worked great because your finger is a big enough blob that it covers a large enough area and it didn't really matter. It doesn't affect the performance of the sensor. So here's a picture of my first full-size prototype. I, I got a, a big piece of plexiglass, or plastic rather, from Tap Plastics, uh, cut to my size, and um, uh, and then you can see uh, the original, the, the sensor from uh, the, the company, the fabricated large sensor, actually for the large instrument. This one here is for the smaller instrument 128. It was uh, with all those uh, ribbon wires and multicolors going from the ends uh, of the columns and the rows all the way up to my Arduino circuit and uh, some circuits there with uh, standard hobby boards using analog switches that I used to switch the signals that go to the ends of, of uh, each of the rows and columns. And so uh, anyway, I was able to work this out and this essentially was uh, a, a, a finished instrument just in prototype form, but I was able to play it and was able to um, uh, refine the software on that. Uh, and so anyway, once I knew that the idea worked, I started working on the entire product design by creating the components in a 3D model, uh, which are uh, a sheet metal, uh, actually aluminum uh, chassis, which is just folded sheet metal, and then there's uh, some silica desk in, in there, which I use to absorb moisture, uh, uh, which you find at any sort of products inside cases and such. And then the wood sides are fabricated for me, and I just screw them onto the ends. So uh, even though it's a fairly low-cost box to make, uh, this gives it uh, more of a rounded, more organic shape. And then on top of that is uh, a, a two-circuit board assembly. Uh, there's a circuit board on the back uh, that contains all the LEDs. And then there are holes in the top circuit board. Uh, and so the LED light shines up through those holes. Um, and then all the other circuitry is on here, some of it's beneath this LED board, uh, that contains uh, the same circuitry as an Arduino DUA board, because I wanted to make this product open sourced, and Arduino is such a great system for that because it's so idiot-proof. 
Uh, so anyway, it has the Arduino, Arduino circuit, and it has all my custom circuitry for analog switches and all the things that are necessary to, to adapt that Arduino circuit into a, um, uh, into, into a musical instrument for my needs. So anyway, on top of this circuit board, this just slides right into the chassis so that the jacks, which are mounted to the end, uh, by the way, uh, they just slip through the holes in the end very nicely. And then what sits on top is this sensor, and it plugs into a couple of uh, uh, small, flat, flexible connectors uh, on the top of the circuit board. Uh, and so that on top of that, then, there's this molded two millimeter thick um, uh, silicone rubber sheet, uh, which is very pliable. It's made from uh, soft silicone, fairly soft. It's uh, 40 durometers, the measurement of, of hardness. Then that sits right on top. And then on top of that is uh, a top panel, which is uh, powder coated and uh, printed with the uh, parameters that uh, I use in the instrument. And that's the whole thing, basically. And then the screws go into the top panel and hold it all together. Uh, so then, um, uh, when I made this 3, 3D model, um, I, I was able to uh, uh, create the engineering drawings for it uh, for all the components. So it made it very easy uh, because, and by the way, my uh, 3D modeler is called Rhino 3D, but what's very popular now is Autodesk Fusion uh, because it has a, a nice student or amateur uh, pricing structure. Um, but anyway, so I used uh, Rhino 3D. I've just used it for years. I like it. Um, and um, it was nice because I would create all the drawings for each component uh, and then um, uh, fit them all together uh, and make sure they fit very well. Uh, and, and so, um, <laughs> just as an example here, I wanted to make the instrument very thin, but the one thing that was problematic was the MIDI jacks. You can't find them. They're all a little bit too high. So in manufacturing, I just snipped them off <laughs> so they fit very well inside the chassis. And the entire chassis is then only one inch thick, which makes it very nice. And, uh, Mini, um, but anyway, so in the 3D model, uh, what I did is I, uh, I took the chassis drawing and I exported that, and that's for the sheet metal vendor as well as the top panel, um, the circuit boards. I took the uh, the dimensions of that and made dimensional files for that, and exported that to the fellow who does the layout of my schematic for the uh, uh, circuit boards, and then uh, uh, the uh, the rubber sheet. Um, uh, is also a 3D uh, model piece, so I exported that with dimensions on it and what's called a step file, which is a, a file containing 3D information uh, to my vendor uh, for that. And then for the, uh, the sensor, it's the same thing. It has two layers with a number of different things that are printed on here, uh, both silver and uh, resistive carbon and also a four sensing resistive carbon in multiple layers. Uh, and that's all explained in the How the Sensor Works uh, page and uh, exported that out to the company that fabricates the, the custom sensor for me. And then it's all uh, assembled by a wonderful company in uh, just south of San Francisco called Lima Electronics that also do uh, Sequential and Oberheim and a number of other music products, Buchla as well. Uh, so um, uh, they're really good people and they just do a great job. And uh, so they're about half an hour away from me and every month when they do new production I just run out there and I personally do a, a quality assurance test and play them all uh, by putting on my musician's hat and uh, make sure everything is fine. Um, so uh, let's see here. Oh and then um, uh, while I was doing all this uh, hardware work I was also writing the software now my software skills are not great uh, and I got an instrument software to the point where it was uh, in playing in basic function, uh, but didn't really have a lot of the, the things that really made into a fine instrument. So um, uh, first of all, my friend Tim Thompson helped me for a while, uh, and he added a lot to the software. Uh, but then he had to get back to making his own instruments. He's a very creative guy, and he has these uh, wonderful instruments, one called the Space Pellet, uh, and um, uh, another called Loopy Cam, <laughs> very creative stuff. Anyway, he had to get back to his work, but then my friend Herd Bevan, uh, Herd is actually, uh, he's Belgian, his name is spelled G-E-E-R-T. Uh, he asked if, if I needed his help, and I said, sure, it'd be wonderful. Uh, and since he uh, took over the software on the project, uh, it was just amazing. He did such incredible work, 
and so um, uh, he is official, the official programmer of an instrument now, and, and the code is way beyond my skills. And, and I have to give credit where credit is due. It was uh, Herod's work that really turned it into the, the very fine, playable musical instrument that it is, and not just a, a controller. Uh, so um, that's, that's basically it. Uh, and finally, in late 2014, uh, it was all ready, and I released it for sale, and uh, it was very nice to see it instantly. There was a lot of um, uh, demand for it. Uh, and at, as of this date, which is uh, mid-2023, there are over 4,300 uh, Linstrumentalists in the world, uh, and they're just wonderful people, uh, very bright people, very open to new ideas. Um, and they actually read their documentation. <laughs> and I've met a lot of great friends from that, and uh, plus the fact that I give a, a monthly uh, Lisbon Zoom call uh, and, and meet a lot of these people, and uh, so it's very nice. Anyway, so that's a good overview of how I made an uh, instrument, and um, I hope you've enjoyed it to find out uh, what's inside and what makes it tick. Thank you very much.